Welcome to my channel, Ken here. Today let's take a look at the MM500 by Odyssey. Let's go! Here are the MM500s, which is a collaboration between Odyssey and the producer Manny Marquin. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, now, Odyssey sent me these headphones for review, but my opinion is mine alone. They have no influence on what I say in this video. Anyway, there is a striking resemblance between the fives and the 500. So this is a uh, trickle down process from the heavy development that went into the fives to make them lighter and more detailed etc etc and they changed their technology where with their magnet positioning and so forth and so on what's different about them is between the five is that they don't have this carbon fiber headband this is a metal headband so they're slightly more heavy and also there's not this fancy i don't know eyeglass kind of pattern here on the sides now they also come with a cheaper cable by the way but the X's which I have here that has a much larger let's see if I can get this on camera much larger diaphragm which I'll comment on later but they're also much heavier so let's see here let's look at the specs it's the X's are 612 grams the 500s are 495 grams and the 5s are 420 grams. So heavy, medium, light. 500 grams almost is still not quite what I would consider light, but it's absolutely a, in the acceptable range, whereas these X's feel a little bit heavy and you feel it, uh, that weight after a while when you wear them. So if, about the efficiency of these, so it also goes in order. Let me read this off to you, the chart here. The uh, X's have 103 dBs for one milliwatt, which is very efficient. Not super efficient, but definitely very efficient. So pretty much anything will drive them to a decent level. The uh, 500s have 100 dB for one milliwatt, which is also respectable. I mean, you need a little bit of power. So most studio gear that has a headphone amp will, will drive these to a reasonable level, uh, if not very loud. Like I, I'll tell you about the, the comparisons I made later. But the fives, though, are 90 dBs at one, one milliwatt, which is kind of inefficient. There are definitely differences between them. Uh, and, and these things actually matter because the associated gear you need to use them with is going to matter. Obviously, um, dedicated head 4 m is very different than what your audio interface, let's say, will provide or or any kind of piece of gear will, will give you, most piece of gear will give you a headphone out, especially audio interfaces. So there's that. As far as I'm concerned, the form factor is very similar to the fives and they do feel very similar to how they, they feel on your head. I got to say, as far as I'm concerned, these 500s are slightly more comfortable than the 5s, only because they feel more rigid, and I kind of like that, but that's my personal preference uh, because of this metal band up here. I mean, obviously, they're open back. The frequency response on these different headphones um, vary quite a bit, though. So most of my testing was done with uh, Sonarworks, uh, so Sound ID. They provide an EQ curve for these. Uh, I have EQ, the, you know, special EQ curves for each one of them to correct for their frequency discrepancies. So without the EQ curve, that's one kind of review, and with the EQ correction is kind of different. That's a caveat I just want to mention right now. There's no doubt that the family resemblance is clear on these headphones. They sound very similar, um, but there are differences for sure, especially when they're not EQ'd. Uh, without EQ, uh, the top end gets a little ragged on, 
on the but that's typical of planar magnetic and also i i would say that these headphones um are pretty flat from about 100 up to a thousand k they 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 have a smooth lower mid-range up to the mid-range middle mid-range and but once you get up to the upper mid-range into the treble it gets a little bit ragged and they can kind of sound a little bit dull and peaky in the top end but with eq they are smooth as silk and they have a pretty even um, presentation Therefore, I recommend that you EQ these headphones or any headphones. I have not heard a flat pair of headphones yet. There's always something that's odd about a headphone presentation until you EQ or, you know, in this case with Sonoworks, you know, you, you flatten out the curve. So my, most of my comparison has been done with this flattening out of the curve. Now, for example, the X is even more ragged and they're kind of dull sounding comparatively whereas the uh, the fives are a little bit more even keel and they're, they're a little bit flatter but still the upper mid range is still a little bit odd to me but once they they eq they sound fine now as far as as an important thing i want to say about these headphones before i go on is they're pretty efficient compared to the fives the fives are incredibly finicky about the amplifier that drives them, especially if you want volume out of them, they can they can deliver the volume, the fives that is, and these can too. But you need an amplifier because they're kind of inefficient. These are way more inefficient. 10 dBs is pretty significant for one milliwatt. So I have no problem driving with anything I've thrown at it. I've used the Lynx interface and they're super louder than I can take and I use the benchmark. Um, HPA f for most of my testing uh, I've tried on a couple of other things you know maybe a phone be slightly underpowered. I mean you're not going to get super much volume out and then you're going to be playing very loud so you drain your battery as far as I'm concerned as far as the listening fatigue then they, they don't have it the typical odyssey is that you can listen for long periods of time without being challenged or, or fatigue or anything like that um, just don't play it too loud because they can play very loud and they're very comfortable to me they're super comfortable i mean they're a little, little bit heavy compared to like 250 gram headphones but i don't feel it too much you know and they're very, they sit on the head they don't move around uh, you know you can bend down they, they, no problems with these that they're, they're very well designed as far as ergonomics are concerned now i tried these with with both balanced cable and with regular regular quarter inch and unlike the fives I, I don't think they care that much I don't hear a huge difference between the two cables you know they're not as finicky about amplification too which is huge Now, how do they compare to the X's and the fives? Well, the X's have a very large diaphragm comparatively, you know, they're much larger, as you can see here. I'm suspecting that the mid range gets much bigger on the X's, which is true when you listen to, let's say, electric guitars and stuff like that. The mid range is pretty big on them, but everything else they, they are better at. I think they have a really nice bottom end, they have a a very nice smooth mid-range that's very accurate actually um, they don't have the biggest sound stage but I'm wondering if you should use sound stage on headphones because all the sound is inside your head but that's another matter entirely however the top end is very good now this is where the X's kind of leaves it behind because here's an example when, when you listen to cymbals the difference between the cymbals and let's say a, a, a pair of overhead recordings is much clearer the differences and much more precise on the fives the other thing is these have this studio monitor quality that is very interesting but it's kind of you draw it's, it feels like you're moving forward 10 rows let's say in a concert hall they're much closer to you compared to the fives even the x's they, they these feel like you you know the sound is right here which is 
very monster-like, actually, you, uh, you know, studio monster-like. Uh, but you're not going to, I mean, if I was listening to only orchestral music, probably not the ones for me, but for studios, that's really good when it's up front. And also, the dynamics of them is phenomenal. I think they're easily on par with the fives, maybe even better, but I'm not so sure yet. They're on par. And therefore, usually I don't recommend people mixing on headphones, but this is the closest I've ever been to being able to mix levels, that is, on headphones, you know, I mean, tweaking EQ and compression, all that, that's great on these, you know, but this is the closest I've been to actually doing leveling on headphones, which can be a very dangerous task. You should use monitors, you know, in the room, but this is its superpower. I think as a monitor, is a studio tool, you know, I, this is, if I didn't have the fives here, uh, these would be it. I would immediately get them. Now I listen to a lot of other headphones. I uh, I leave the the link below for similarly priced headphones that I did review a, a few a little while ago. The um, I would pick these in that price range. You know, below two thousand. These are the ones I'm going to get, uh, hands down. I haven't heard anything better in this price range. Uh, do I recommend them? Highly. I highly recommend these headphones. If you can't get the fives, which are way more expensive, are, are they that much better? Well, that's about performance, right? How much performance do you want? But if I didn't have the fives here, I would get these for sure. I mean, they're just, they, they, they are comfortable, they're detailed, um, they are superb as a, uh, as a monitoring tool for a studio for sure. But even for average listening, I think they're really good, especially if you listen to modern music. I think they're, yeah, they're up there in the top echelon of, of headphones that I've heard. So would I recommend them? No doubt. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of these headphones. Are they overpriced? Are they priced right? Are they underpriced? Um, do, how, where do they fit in the Pantheon things? And what do you think? Until next time, take care.